G'day everyone, it's Angela Rumora here. I'm your favorite Australian and the real estate dingo, and I'm bringing you another absolutely fantastic vlog. And today I'm talking to you guys about how you can eliminate risk when you're looking to buy a fix and flip property. Let's get started. So this is the first thing that I need you guys to do. And there's a saying and it goes like this, information is power. So I want you to select one or at the most two zip codes of a particular area that you're looking at buying, fixing and flipping it. Now when you have done so, I want you to make sure that you absolutely immerse yourself in everything and anything consisting that is real estate related in that particular zip code. So network with real estate agents, network with wholesalers, network with other folks that are buying, fixing and flipping in that area, network with real estate investors that might be utilizing other strategies. Check Craigslist, check Zillow, check Trulia, all of these online platforms. I want you to know what properties are selling for via auction. Um, I want you to know what properties are selling for via all of the auction websites. I want you to know what properties are selling for that are distressed that are renovated, that are in average condition. I want you to know how long the properties sit on the market. I want you to know everything and anything that you could possibly know about real estate and flipping in that particular area. Guys, you really have to immerse yourself in the numbers and you really have to um, know all of the right people. I mean, your network equals your net worth. Um, so please, that's the first thing that you have to do. The second thing, guys, that I need you to do is this. I want you to start off small. So when you're looking at buying a property and you're selecting through, you know, all of these opportunities and there's a ton of opportunities in a lot of markets and if there isn't, well maybe you've selected the wrong zip codes. But I want you to start off small. I don't want you to get overwhelmed with a huge job, meaning you'd be buying a property that needs a full-blown constructural rehab. Um, you'd have to pull permits, you'd have to do all kinds of crazy stuff, um, you know, potentially even do work to the foundation. That is the last thing that you want to do. Try and find the property that you can buy at way, way, way below market value. They say that you make money when you buy, not when you sell. So you have to buy dirt cheap and buy that property where it only needs a cosmetic rehab. So what I mean by that, I mean like paint the inside, paint the outside, replace the kitchen countertops, paint the kitchen cabinets, put new, new fittings in, um, new laminate floor or tile the floor, new carpet or laminate flooring, light fittings, landscaping, these are some basic items of when you're looking at buying, fixing and flipping that, that, that aren't expensive to do, you can get in and out pretty quickly and guys, the shorter amount of time that you spend on that particular rehab, the lower your risk is. You really want to get in and out as quickly as you possibly can. And guys, last but not least, oh, I almost forgot, the least amount of money that you can invest in that particular property, the lower your risk will be. So that is why I want you to start off small. Start off small in regards to the renovation and start off small in regards to the amount of money that you're looking at investing. And the last but not least, guys, that you need to look for is this. I want you to have multiple exit strategies. So when you're buying this property, make sure that you know you can, first of all, potentially sell it to a homeowner. So the area has to have infrastructure supporting a homeowner demand. Of course, the margins need to make sense where you can make a profit, but also you need to be able to have an exit strategy where someone that wants to live in the area because of the school district, because of the shops and amenities, because of whatever it may be, um, you have to have that end buyer in mind that would be interested in purchasing this property from you. Another little quick tip is if you are looking at selling to a homeowner, I advise that you don't price the property um, uh, too high because you don't want it sitting on the market for longer than necessary. I always like to rehab every single one of my A-class flips to a better standard than the comparable sales and list them for the same price or a little bit cheaper because guys, Time is money. The sooner I can get my money out of the deal, move it into a next one, I can do more deals in that particular calendar year. So first exit strategy is sell to a homeowner. Um, if the area supports a potential uh, um, buy, fix, tenant and sell to an investor, by all means, that would be fantastic. So you can purchase this property, renovate it to a decent standard, not to an A-class standard, get it tenanted, have a good property management company in place, and then sell it to an investor. As long as those numbers make sense and the investor can get a good cap rate, I think that's another fantastic exit strategy for, for, for your investment. Um, if for whatever reason you were able to secure this property at a dirt, dirt, dirt cheap price and you don't really want to go about doing all of the work yourself, 
um, I suggest you wholesale it, close on the transaction first, make sure you perform on that contract, and then put your margin on top and wholesale it to someone else. I'm sure that, you know, if you've spent the time to educate yourself about who is buying, fixing, and flipping in that area, you can wholesale a good deal to any buy, fix, and flipper all day long. And um, the last but not least exit strategy that I suggest you guys have in place when you're looking at um, um, one of these areas is to where you can potentially buy the property, do the absolute bare minimum work to it, just kind of make it a clean canvas, and once again, then you're going to wholetail it to someone else, another buy, fix, and flipper, where you still leave enough meat on the bone where they can come in, purchase the property, do a higher end renovation that you have and still make their margins where you might make a little bit more margin than you would on an actual wholesale deal. Um, one thing guys that I want you to keep in mind is, as you can tell, there are a lot of moving parts to make buying, fixing and flipping successful and to eliminate as much risk out of it as possible. I strongly advise that all of these three tips that I've mentioned you try and make sure that they kind of intertwine with each other and that you find a market and area that supports um, all of these three tips. And um, also don't forget guys that your network equals your net worth. Conduct as much due diligence as possible. Really network with everyone and anyone in the area. Look at what some of the top dogs are doing, how they're going about flipping their homes. And um, the more you immerse yourself in that, of course, the more your mindset will expand and the more you will know. So guys, that's pretty much it. Um, any questions, comment below. Uh, any critique, comment below. I want it all. Bring it all to me. Um, I'm happy to hear other strategies that you guys might be implementing and how you're going about buying, fixing, and flipping and minimizing risk on your flips. Um, but other than that, until the next blog, um, you guys have a fantastic day. I'm Angela Ramora. I'm the Real Estate Dingo, and I'll catch up with you soon.